All right, guys, welcome back to Gilligan Phantom, where we turned this big school bus into a tiny house. Oh, God. We are wiring up our inverter today. It is a 3000 VA 24 volt Victron Multi Plus. I actually think it's not a 3000 watt inverter. It's a little bit less. It's going to be able to power our AC appliances off grid. And now that we have a battery bank and solar coming in, we're ready to give this a try. Stay tuned and see how we wire up and put our inverter to work. So real quick, I've got to explain something important to you. A 50 amp shore power line actually has two 50 amp hot wires. They both carry up to 50 amps of power. So technically a 50 amp shore line can carry 100 amps. A circuit breaker box like this one could use 100 amps, but we don't need to do that. That's more power than we need. And so we've limited the whole thing by 50 amps at our external breaker. The problem is a breaker box still has two hot lines in and they each feed different sets of breakers. So what we've got to do is we've got to jump power from the one line that we're gonna keep active to where the other line went and then cap and leave the second hot line. This is all because this inverter that we bought, it's not a split phase inverter. It only has one hot input. So what I've done is what I just said I would do. Okay, I'll show it to you. Do you see how this black and red line are in the same lug and then that red line is in its own lug? That red line is taking the power from the black line over to that set of circuits. I don't know what kind of to code this is but this is my freaking school bus conversion i do what i want if this is unsafe please let me know if you're going to do this yourself please do your own research i've been told that this is okay so this is what i've done and we still have power to everything so now i'm going to cut this obviously i have to go turn the power off and splice it and wire it into our inverter so that's what i'm going to do next it's going to get a little dark in here Okay, so I did get these wires in. I had to fight and fight and fight to get this in. I clearly have the wrong six gauge wires for this inverter. They are super, super stiff. It was almost impossible. I think this took me two hours, not gonna lie. That's in, I'm gonna try and clean it up and then I'm gonna connect my battery, my inverter cables to the battery bank. <laughs> coming up let's go for the switch oh you're coming to, you're coming to see hey we came to find out if it works yeah it thinks first thing i do is plug can this I in see the camera? sure you hold it now it's cold and we are really really cold oh okay come on in you can talk this is our bus house and we are this and a couch now it's cold and we are this in a bus Hi, it's cold, but it's cold, but we live in school bus house, but we live in school bus, but, but we live in school bus house, but we live in a little, little, little big house. <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip the switch. Can you guys film me? Yes. And uh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It works, what can I say? I wanna to talk to you guys about why I chose this inverter and what it can do. First of all, it's an inverter charger. What that means is that it'll use the AC power coming in from the shore line, use it to power all of our devices, but it's gonna take the surplus and put it into the batteries until they're full. And the next thing it does is it's actually what's called a hybrid inverter. It takes a short power. If you don't have enough, it's going to pull the extra that you need from the batteries. For example, let's say I plugged into an outlet at somebody's house. I got 15 amps, that's all I'm gonna get. Maybe I need 30. The inverter is gonna pull 15 amps out of the batteries, so it like boosts the capability of the shore inlet that you have, which is great, because that means we can have more power in more circumstances. I know it also has some cool interfaces that we haven't bought yet that we might buy. So now for the first time ever, I'm gonna unplug, and you're gonna see that we still have power. Look at that. 
All right guys, so it has been a couple weeks since I installed the inverter. I wanted to pause on this video and get some real life experience with it before I talk to you about it further. We've now been living with it for a couple weeks. We've been off grid for slight periods of time. And I wanna tell you what the limitations of this inverter are and why that could be a good thing for you or us if you choose to use it. So let me take this bus off grid and show you how it works. All right, so we got some sleeping babies in bed, as you can see, so I gotta talk kinda quietly. Let me show you the smart dongle that I installed on this thing. Down here is a Bluetooth smart dongle that I installed to get information from the inverter to my phone via Bluetooth. So you can see right now that I've got 300 watts coming out of the inverter from the battery bank, and that is mostly our mini split heater, which is running right now, and a couple other phantom draws, and maybe the refrigerator. Now we have about 2,500 watts usable from this inverter. It can surge more, but you'll see that it goes into overload after a while. Now if I turn on the induction cooktop, put it on high, you can see that it's gonna start pulling an additional 1,600 watts. We are getting close to our limit. Now we could run the induction cooktop and do anything else in the bus because the various draws will not add up to 2500 watts. But the water heater, on the other hand, let me go click that on for you. Now the water heater bumps us up to 3400 watts and I'm now seeing that I'm in overload. So that basically is the main limitation of this inverter for us. We cannot make coffee and take a shower at the same time, which is not a big deal. What we're probably going to do is wake up, use the induction cooktop, maybe cook breakfast, maybe just make some coffee, and then turn the water heater on. The water heater uses 1500 watts, it takes 20 minutes to heat up, and then that'll give you seven gallons, which you can then take a shower with, or wash some dishes, or do whatever else you need to do with hot water. Besides that, the uh, mini split for heat and air conditioning is generally using less than 600 watts. It does vary a bit. And a refrigerator is using 40 to 60 watts when it's on, and all those do not add up to much use. Computer chargers, lights, everything is minimal. So if you're buying this inverter and you're trying to do an all electric schoolie like us, know that you're gonna be limited with what you can do at the same time. And that brings us to another point. The battery bank is limited. You do not have unlimited power. You might have unlimited wants and desires, but you can't do everything that you want to off grid in a schoolie unless you build a monster battery bank, which means money or weight or size or time or all four of those things. I'm really excited about the Bluetooth it means that while we're doing things in the bus, I'm able to look at exactly what causes us to use a lot of electricity. And that way, when we're off grid, we can pare it down. For example, once the water heater is done heating up water, we're absolutely gonna turn it off. And it's almost nice that if we leave it on and start cooking, we get an overload warning from the inverter, which is really just the inverter saying like, hey, I can't do this for that much longer. If you wanna pick up this inverter too, the best price when we bought was on Amazon. That link is below but every solar distributor will have this for you. And you might wanna buy from them instead of Amazon because they will give you support, they will take your phone calls, they will answer your questions. In general, it's a good idea. Peace. Now we are cold, it's cold outside so it's cold so we can live inside. Good point. Now it's hot and we live in school bus house. Now it's time for me to fly.